Write that. Write that down for me, Saito. Yeah, so we got to go back and, and talk about, you know, how it all started. Yeah. And, uh, and also, I believe Debbie is very good, you know, the, the living evidence, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, like a proof that, that what you've gone through, you know, the old Japan women's boot camp practice, you know, trip out in Ireland the whole week, you know, and the uh, Japanese dojo system and practicing all these things. And the 200, 300 nights a year, you know, on the bus in town to town to going, hello. <laughs> is, that, is that Shannon? No, it's Hunter. Okay. <laughs> very, oh, he can jump in. Your mom, yeah. too. You want to be on a podcast? No. No. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm not okay. wrestling. <laughs> well, whoever wants to join in, it's totally fine. And yeah, because on this screen you're being Debbie Malenko, but in there actually you're mom too. So right, right. Well, and that's yeah. one of those things I was thinking about. You know that whole thing with the Japanese training at the dojo and how they do it, which is a lot different than what they do here in the states. You know, starting at a young age and you know, rules and guidelines and what you're not allowed to do, like date or anything like that. It's so different than what it is here in the States. So <laughs> okay. so many people probably don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. And actually, you have experienced that. And you came in when you were 19, Betty? Yes. Yeah, 19. Oh, when she was 19. Well, the thing is, how it all started was that uh, there was Medusa's era, two-year run, you know, with all Japan women. And she was ready to leave and hit the big time back in America, which she did. You know, she went to, you know, signed with WCW, you know, and Rossi wanted to, you know, have, you know, full-time American wrestler, but this time more of a rookie, you know, and she will actually come in and live in Japan and go through this rookie practice and, uh, and just do everything, you know, with Japanese wrestlers, you know. And then, uh, Which being, was brilliant. Uh, yeah, and yeah, then being put in a situation did, yeah. where where nobody spoke a word of English. How's that? <laughs> they yeah, well, some ja- yeah. English. Yeah, yeah, they knew, yeah they knew some words, words. Than, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, Justin, are you with me on this? Mm-hmm. You know this. Yeah. Well, actually, Debbie already debuted in in florida before you know b- before she came to japan because you went to malenko wrestling school then debuted and had a ring name of debbie drake thing and some experience you know but but not quite full-time right because it's independent no, not full-time so, i yeah, had maybe a handful of matches before hand- i went to japan so i wasn't seasoned at all i was still green went behind the ears but yeah <laughs> but what's a a good time to go to Japan because yeah, I was I still so. in the learning yeah, process. And also, I wasn't... the 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 photographer our magazine weekly pro wrestling or baseball magazine chef, the Florida photographer Bill Otten fo- photographed the the Mal- Mal- Tampa Malenko Dojo practice, and there's one female in there, you know, among you know, the Malenko students. Who is this girl? You know, we went, you know, like, uh, who is this girl? And, I mean, uh, it seemed young, right? And the training among guys, and it was the only girl in there, and asked her, she said she wanted to go to Japan. All right, let's bring her to Japan. To make a long story short. Are you with me, Justin? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Then, uh, you, He's a man have of to, many words, yes. Yeah, well, but the, you, we have to remember this was, you know, decade before internet and decades before cell phone. You know, from the ground phone to ground phone, you know, I made the international phone call, you know. And, hey, phones. Uh, hey, yeah, phones yeah, with the, the phone long, cards. Yeah. yeah, and the long distance phone call was really expensive from Tokyo to America, you know, and you have to dial a lot of numbers, you know, like a certain number to get out of country and the country code, then area code and local number. Do I get through? You know, then it was your, in your parents' house, your mom's house. You know, and there's a time zone, and I I called and I introduced him, you know, myself, and 
Well, they basically wanted to come. So, you know, just like, do you really want to do this? And she said, yes. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll go into concrete plan. Yeah. Yep. That's I remember when we were sitting down looking at the contract, too, and we looked at, you know, the contract uh, and how much I get paid per week. And you're like, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> like, yeah, of course, because yeah. you weren't you weren't making you know you know several thousand dollars a week starting or anything like that. You know, it was like rookie money. You know, and yeah, right. I did go to Tampa, Florida after that, and, and had a meeting at the Sizzler and and Dale yep. Mabry. Oh, Dale Mabry Street. All right, and Sizzlers, <laughs> late Mister. Malenko, you know, Larry Malenko, the Bo Boris Malenko, the great, great Malenko, and late Masami Soranaka stood with us. Yeah, both senseis, both teachers were, yeah, yeah. they passed. But uh, it was symbolic, you know, yeah. Mr. Well, Malenko. And that's, when, yeah. that's when they gave me the, the Malenko name to use when I went over there as well. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Because uh, that would... Yeah, it's almost like a small tradition that, uh, to, you know, to adopt some legend's name into your ring name. Yeah. And, uh, well, people start assuming that you are a little sister of Dean and Joe, you know, Jody. Yeah. Well, I kind of felt like me, it. Yeah. And then yeah, it Mr. was great. Yeah. Larry, Mr. Malenko's daughter, right? So, but it was good, you know, because you came out of Malenko Wrestling School. And at the time, the only female, you know, came out of school. And at the time, if you remember, UWF style was so big in Japan. UWF style. Justin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it was the, the, booming. Yeah. And then UWF style was much like MMA later on, you know, that uh, cut, 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 you know, cut the bullshit from wrestling. We don't bounce off the ropes, you know, right. and we don't do silly high spot, you know, and then uh, we just straight wrestling. And because of that, a lot of the wrestling moves that was hidden in the dojo. If you remember, Debbie, that the cricket head scissors, the mm -hmm. you know the arm lock, that you know double wrist lock arm lock, or the Achilles tendon into heel lock, and you know these things were done at the dojo, but rarely seen in an actual match in front of the audience. But the UWF style and Malenko schooling it brought the dojo moves into spotlight and you were taught that probably without even knowing it you know because you may not use that in actual part of the training yeah that's yeah what we did. yeah yeah and not the move that will be using in the in front of the audience because in front of the audience you might be doing a lot more like a easy to understand moves you know mm -hmm. and, right uh, yeah and that's what rossi told me when i went over there he's like do your thing do what you do you know, do those moves, the Malenko style. But I almost felt like it might have been a little boring for the crowd just because it was a lot of mat work. It wasn't the the drop kicks and the, you know, because the Japanese Flashy women are, things. Yeah. are so fast. They're running on the ropes. They're jumping off the top. Everything's just, you know, just these powerful hits and everything. And here I am with a lot of mat work and arm bars and leg locks and things sure. like that. So I was a bit nervous about slowing things down too much and making it boring, but it wasn't. They loved it. It was yeah, so, well, because people register. It is a girl who does like UWF style. They was the only female wrestler doing it at the times so ago. That made you special from day one. Yeah. Right. Which was but good. Rossi yeah. had a really good brain for wrestling. He knew that would go over because he knew the people. He knew what was popular at the yeah, time. Well, well, well also out, create so. create this more shoot oriented looking wrestler, mm -hmm. you know, throw him into this Manami Toyota situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So that was like, uh, yeah, very, very good. So we signed a contract, flew over to Japan, and we met you at the Narita airport. And yeah. that was you, it was Rossi Hasegawa, my. Yeah, Hasegawa. Yeah, Hasegawa. Yeah, my tag Justin. team partner. And yeah, he had that, that set up ahead of time. He knew I was going to be tag teaming with her. And that's why he brought her to the airport. Yeah, to meet. So, yeah, yeah, to meet me. Not that you spoke Japanese, not that she spoke perfect English and anything like that. But at the time, there was another tag team, All Japan Pro Wrestling, if you remember. Young Kenta Kobashi and Young Johnny S being, you know, young American and young Japanese being like, like a regular tag team. 
Are you with me, Ju- Justin? Yeah, you had the, uh, the young blonde American and the young Japanese <laughs> rookie. They both had the coiffed hair, and uh, <laughs> you know they were the young studs of that time, or, or that was the that was how they were positioned, right? Yeah, so not like one time deal, but they had a regular tag team thing going. Yeah, and they won the Asian For a while. tag team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like the Rossi had idea. We we'll have this new generation tag team, ha, ha, you know. Sakie Hasegawa, Japanese rookie, and Debbie Malenko, American rookie, wasn't rookie, well, kind of rookie, that put it together in regular right. tag team situation. There did a lot of you know, tag team at the time that uh, Manami Toyota and Toshio Yamada teaming, you know, regularly that, you know, Mita and Shimoda, right? Remember? Right. And yeah, and uh, Takako Inoue and Kyoko Inoue. That, and at the time, St- Bo, Bo Nakano and Aja Kang split later on, but the Bo Nakano and Aja Kang still tag teaming together. And there's like sets of tag teams that you can do things with. Well, it was Aja and uh, Bison Kimura. Bison was, uh, yeah, Jungle Jack, yes. Yeah, yeah Jungle right. Jack was a thing. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and then when mm-hmm. then it was Bull and Hokuto Akura. Yeah, a little bit. They yeah. were teaming but against the whole- them. So that was the two big rivalries. Right then, Hokuto, uh, you know, formed her own faction, the Alaska Cholas, a little bit later on. But the tag team was like a you know single division is good, but the, when you have regular tag team, mm-hmm. like this pair here, this pair there, tag team here, that is sets of programming that they can do a lot with. And you were thrown in with Japanese wrestler there, <laughs> right away. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah. good. I, good start. I think it helps when you start out being in a tag team like that because then you get the rhythm, you get to work with people, and if you get in trouble, you get the tag out. Yeah, and you get help that way. So the single matches are a little more difficult. How being soon? A new how soon did you pick up the language? Oh, I don't think I ever did completely. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. you, but you how com- how complicated all Japan women's tag team matches are? You know, They're, sometimes. Yeah, they're or very let alone complex. So six, complex. Wo- six six women tag team match, like twenty five high spot going, you know, all, all simultaneously. Not simultaneous, but one yeah. one after yeah. another. Just well, uh, it's easy I to find yourself spectating from the corner too, because you're just in awe of what you're seeing in front of you, and you're standing in the corner going, "Oh shit, I got to tag in." And there you go. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's yeah. amazing to just be part of that. But you can, yeah. you can, especially in like the the six-man tag teams. You know, the more people oh, you get in there, the more there is to do. But, it you know, it seems like it goes fast because everybody's trying to get their moves in. And you got in. so many yeah. people. You just you tag in and it's spot, and, spot, spot. Yeah. Spot. And each of those women have tons of things to do on her, exactly. you know, on her own. Yeah. yeah. And six six women tag team is especially interesting because two here, two there, two there, like three different places and three things going at the time. Then kind of rotate, you know. Yeah, and then trying yeah. not to get in anybody's way because you know they've got something to do. So you're like trying to get around the corner, move out of the way. Yeah, yeah. it gets to that be was, fun. Uh, it was but, amazing yeah. that. Uh, you must have picked up wrestling language before the regular Japanese language. Yeah, I think the the wrestling language was actually a mixture of Spanish, Japanese, and English. Depending oh, okay. on okay. depending on the on the move, you call it a different thing. So Oh you do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, uh, Esther and Cynthia Morano, they yeah. were there at the time too. And Esther was very fluent in Japanese. In Japanese, yes. So she's she interpreting for me. So she's yeah. kind of the go-between. So you kind of learn. You're you're talking, you know, to a crowd of people. You're all standing around and you're all speaking three different languages, but everybody understands each other. Yeah, so that's good. It, that's it had good. to look really, really strange from the outside, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, okay. I want this, and our listeners out there to you know know more about what, what you've done in Japan. And then you came to Japan. They put you in first. They put you in an ap- apartment there. But a couple months later, you came. That was the same apartment Medusa was living first. You know, then right. they and that was occupied. A, was take, a yeah, somebody came. Away. Yeah, 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 like a block away or two blocks yeah. away. But then you, they moved you to a. a uh, the, the third floor of the office. That's a famous old Japan women's building. You know, first floor, right hand side. It's a big garage with two buses going. You know, parked, parked, 
and left hand side was like a ground floor dojo and right. the stair, the stair in the middle they go second floor right hand side is all japan woman's office and yeah, yeah left hand side is sanzoku restaurant and third floor on there's like a dormitory right and, and up up in the roof midgets are living remember yeah 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 so that yeah, the was the rooftop uh, it was the midgets lived up there and that's where you did laundry so you, oh, you okay you machines and where you hung out your clothes to dry so yeah <laughs> spend, a, this, spend a lot of time up there and in the restaurant yeah sanzoku restaurant <laughs> that the wrestling off his own dressing and a lot of the girls washed dishes and uh, did you know i mean worked in back in the kitchen too right sometimes yeah a lot of the girls did work there and i i wasn't sure why i think it was to supplement you know what they were making as wrestlers because it was always the young girls yeah so, rookie, which, which, which makes sense. all all the odd job too you know right because yeah, you know you sweep the dojo and you clean up the dojo or you know do other things you know uh, and there was like a 300 nights a year schedule they stopped doing that you know years after that but the, while you were there they were still running night after night after night after night That's, that non-tv non-televised house shows you know on house shows small towns yeah yeah and the week weeknights yep. yeah yeah monday tuesday wednesday thursday and were you counting like weekends and uh what day how many days you're gonna be gone from the you know your apartment the dormitory and the, how many bags you brought and, uh, yeah just trying to figure out how much how much to pack and take with you but you know, when you're living on the bu the bus, you got storage and, you know. Right. Let's tell yeah. our listeners the bus. It's a big bus. And actually, you have your fixed spot, right? Yeah, everybody's. I, I don't know if it's assigned same... seating, but everybody sits in the same places. Yeah, because there's you a, got a, a carton. You make yeah, your little home. You, yeah. Yeah, you have a little speaker. For privacy little, when yeah, you want to take a nap. Little yeah. speaker with your Walkman. Mm -hmm. and the, Cassette tape and CDs, of course. <laughs> at of the course. Time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the clothes, like a regular clothes, wrestling related clothes, and your tennis shoes, sneakers, and wrestling gear here, there, and uh, mm -hmm. your comfortable little, spot. Little drying racks for your laundry. So if it wasn't completely dry, because you wash it yeah. in the sink. So when you get uh, to your hotel, okay. you take your laundry, you wash it in the sink, you hang it out to dry. If it's not dry, you hang it up in the bus. So it hanging down and the you aisle. you didn't have yeah. all that many wrestling gears, you know, no. two or three all together. So you kept washing right. it? Of course. Yep. Yeah. And the first black pair ring boots was given by Jody Simon? Jody's? No, no. Oh, it Soranaka, was uh, Masami's. Masami gave him. Yeah. Uh, Masami Soranaka. So those were his boots. Yeah. For, for the listeners out there, Masami Soranaka is son-in-law of God. Korgach. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, and one of the one of the early coaches of yours, right? Yeah. And actually so, the picture I think that got me to Japan was the group picture that we took. It was Carl. Carl was Masami was people. there. Yeah. And Beef, you know, the Wellington Wilkins Jr. Jumbo Barretta was there. Norman Smiley. Norman Smiley. Norman Smiley was there. And Toy Ishikawa, of course, yeah. was there. And, he was uh, there. The UWF and this, you know, God of Wrestling, the Malenko, the Carl Gatches. This was like a great picture. And you were and right there's in this the girl front. right in the middle. Yeah, like, who is this girl? I mean, yeah. everybody else was somebody, you know, like a normal smiley. The, the, what's a karate guy? Willie Wilson. Oh, uh, Bart Vale. Oh, yeah, Bart he Bale. was in there. Yeah, Bart Vale. Yeah. yeah, Willie Wilkins was in there, of course. Jumbo Breda was in there. And Masami. Yeah, this is a group practice photo and the unknown girl right in in the front sitting like like in your gym class you know yeah so <laughs> and then also after all this girl was the only female wrestler trained by Carl Gutch because he never taught girls you know no he he spent a lot of time toy and I spent a lot of time together because toy was helping training me at the time to you know, learn some of the Japanese styles. So it was it was fun to have those two in the ring who were trying to teach yeah. me all kinds of fun stuff, which I still I don't and have a high vertical. 
So the yeah, well, not, li- not a oh, move. Oh, this I is it. Yeah, that, there we that, go. Going right in front. You found oh, it. Oh my yeah, god! There we go. Yeah, that was it. Oh, oh my god! Because it's like a, every be all the rest serious wrestling fan knew everybody there. You know who who they were and to, who is this so, girl in, in front? Maybe <laughs> if you, can you follow my cursor? There's you, right there. <laughs> I don't know if you can yeah. see that, but you got young Deb Malenko with the uh, Black Magic Norman Smiley. I think that's Norman Bart Vale. Bart yeah. Vale, Masami Soronaka, uh-huh. Jumbo Beretta, mm-hmm. Jumbo Beretta, and Miss, yeah, Miss, Mr. Wrestling. Koro Gacha, of course, and Young Toy Ishikawa, wow. and Willie Willikins Jr. Or Beef and Wellington. They all went to UWF. And yep. that Ishikawa, by the time Toy came home, the big split between UWF and he joined Fujiwara Gumi instead of you because UWF was gone then. And then Masami told him to basically join Fujiwara. Then the Fujiwara Gumi became Battlelords, you know? So, right. Yeah. God, this is like, this is like what, the 1991 photo? Probably. Probably 1991. Yeah. 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 Like some 30, 34 years ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, but the thing is, I put this page to, I put this page together in weekly pro wrestling, you know. And, That's back uh, when you worked for him. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I I, I every week, week in, week out, you know, year after year after when year, that- all the American stuff I did it every week. And this was a fun page that, that I remember. And actually we always lined up when the magazine came out. You yeah. always knew where to find the girls because we're all at the magazine stand waiting for that to come out so we uh, can see who's in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because because girls, you know, all wrestlers look for, I mean, w- where you were in it in the magazine. Yeah, you exactly. Know, every what page am I on? Am I in it this time? What they Yeah, because oh. we have to remember this was decade, decades before the internet. You know, yeah. and what's no on Facebook, the internet? No yeah. Twitter, none of that. It was all magazine. Yeah, no social media. But the the what, what was great was that that this wrestler came out of that picture. You know, that's right. She, that girl trained by Carl Gotch actually came to Japan, not just tour or two, but she actually came to Japan and lived. You know, that was like wow. That was a big thing. You know. Yeah, that's All the right. best way to learn, though. Just the immersion in it. Just go and be part of it. That yeah. was a lot of fun. It was, it was hard, but anything worthwhile is. It was great. I loved it. Yeah, and it was like a, such an adventure. You were nineteen then. Yeah, and well, other nineteen-year-old were there in, in all Japan women, you know, and yeah. So it was good though that uh, it's not. The, the part of men's wrestling group and have one women's match in there, but the entire company, 45 all wrestlers, women. all women, you know, right? And travel together and run 250, 300 shows a year. And and sometimes you set up the chairs or concessions and uh, um, or the ring and yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the ring out tables, merchandise every- table, of course, and and during the summer. It's not even a gymnasium or the the city you know, town parking hall. Lot. Parking, parking lot, lot show, shows. yeah, parking yeah. lot shows. You know, <laughs> yeah, because also symbolize the time. Like, right, there were promoters running shows at some big parking lot. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a town you've never heard of. Hoping that's, it doesn't rain. Yeah, that's one. And crazy even if it thing. did rain, we still. Put on a show. Just sure, had to be a little sure. careful. And yeah. then put the seat, seat around it so people can't see it, you know, to pay to get in, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't all that expensive either, you know, probably $20, $30, you know, to get in. Because today's wrestling is spend anywhere from 50 to $200, $300, you know? Yeah, it's crazy what people and pay to, to get today. into a... Yeah, yeah, yeah today. I, I can't afford to go to a WWE show <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also merchandise yeah Dad, yeah exactly the crazy thing about the travel is that back then you, you were going to place at 250 a day to shows a year you, people, fans got to realize that not every city is like tokyo and japan i mean you probably right. seen more of deb malenko's Country. probably seen more of the country of japan than a lot of japanese people because yeah, I think so more than I have. Yeah. 
I mean, some of the, do you have any stories or, or memories of, of really small, unique towns that you got to visit? In- or the not even the hotel, but the small Japanese ryokans? Japanese oh, inn. The yes. Yeah, because they're, you know, you can almost smell the age of a building when you go in ah. it. Like, if you know, you know, you go into a new hotel, you can smell that it's new. new but hotel, these, yeah. yeah, these, yeah, the older ones just have that, that, Almost the antique yeah. smell to them, and just yeah. the architecture and everything was just amazing to see. And then the yeah, meals so, too. Oh yeah, the traditional. It was old, you had this, you know, chawan and the rice and the chopsticks, and uh-huh. every day you just ate with Japanese, right? Yeah. What are the smelly beans? Oh, the nuttos, the fermented yeah. beans, nuttos. Yeah. Of course, Worst yeah, nuttos. smell in the world, but actually they're. Quite delicious, but they're <laughs> extremely. You, you have to get used to, to it. Yeah, yeah what to go uh, to the English speaking Western fans, you know, need to be <laughs> that need, need not to be to, uh, not to the fermented beans, fermented soybeans. Fermented there you go. Soybeans. And uh, and the rice, and you have nori, nori that the uh, like seaweed, seaweed, dry seaweed dry to go with I, it. I still buy that at Costco. Oh, so, you do? Okay. Yeah, we're big fans of seaweed. So <laughs> okay, and uh, not just the uh, white, you know, white fish, but like a the fish cooks like you still look like fish. Yeah, it's the whole fish. Yeah, the grilled. little, little thing. so you got the skin, you got the head, you got everything but the guts, and oh, yeah, yeah. just grilled, and it's actually yeah. good. So yeah. oh, okay, and raw egg on top of steamed rice, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you can't you, get me on food for me. I love food. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, you want you try to cook koroke in you know koroke is like you know like a deep fried mushed potato thing with breaded crumb around it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Koroke. Yeah. That, yeah. And, I've tried to make that at home, but I'm not that good. So you next have time I come to, to put Japan, that in I've freezer for a while before you deep fry it. Oh, yeah, is that the trick? Okay. Yeah, because oh, it's gonna crumble it because it's because it's a mashed potato. How can you deep fry mashed potato without crumbling it? You know, so right. you gotta put it in the freezer for a while. Then you have so much that you see. Of course, wrestling, but you went to those ryokans and did they have like a huge, bath, like hot hot tub bath, like twenty people can get in? We went to we went to one that was, and I couldn't tell. You know, of half course. the time I didn't know where I was or what town I was in. But <laughs> yeah, we went to one that was really huge, big size where, you know, they, it was an outdoor. Heated. Okay, hot, like hot spring? Hot spring, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've seen it. You know, it's kind of like being on on, on, a, on a school trip all year long. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, that, and that's something that I got paid to go there and do that. And experience all of that. So I didn't yeah. have to pay to do it. I got yeah. paid to be there and experience. <laughs> oh, you know, no, no. only when you can do it. It was amazing. 1920, you know. And uh, like right. your PhD. Actually, yeah, what was interesting was that you just started out in this like a second match, third match situation, and you really climb up the ladder, you know, to be in this, you know. First match, second match, third match situation to a tag mm-hmm. team situation, and you won all Japan singles title too while you were there. Right. All Japan singles title and all Japan tag team title with Saki Hasegawa. Then right. even challenged Akira Hokuto's white belt, that the all Pacific belt at the end, you know, and yeah. you didn't get to the red belt all the way yet, you know, but you uh, did yeah. have. Sp- didn't you know have enough time to get there. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like a really real that the day make you climb up the, you know, the go up the, the card, you know? Right. Well, and it's realistic you, that way because you can see when I went in and had my first few matches, just how good I was. And, you know, the Japanese fans are smart. They know if you can wrestle or not. They know if you're getting the moves or not. So to put, to bring me in as a young person, person and put me in you know the first second match of the night and see me build up that way and evolve that's the smart way to do it and then you you were there and they're there every night i'm talking about matsunaga family big brother oh yeah right 
and uh, one of them you call used to call a uh, manager, Jimmy mm -hmm. Pam Kunimaki. Right. They the one they give you, you know, to go home. But uh, they right. sometimes want to see who fights harder. Right. You know what I'm and saying? And they're looking for heart. Yeah. They, they want to yeah. see who has who has heart, who's going to, you know, just keep getting up and going after it and working hard. And we actually had a tag team match. It was myself, Hasegawa, and I can't remember who we were working against, but it was a match where we didn't know who was going to go over. Because they had two sets of finish. Everyone I mean, I mean, had I mean, the finish. Today's... You didn't yeah. know which team was going over, but you didn't know which person was going over. So and everyone the, the had a finish. He had the cigarette sign, cigarette. Mm -hmm. You know, he's sitting in a desk, you know, in the ringside desk, and he has yep. the cigarette on his hand. If you do this, certain certain wrestlers going over. Yes. If he goes, everyone's got just like baseball. You know, he's yeah, going to give you the sign. You got to look for it, and they'll let you know when. And you just keep going until in, in the middle of the match, you home. keep looking at the table. Who's and going try over? not to be obvious, right? Yeah, but uh, then you saw the sign saying, like, you know, we're going like this. Right. Like, All right, I'm going over. You're you like, know? <laughs> yeah, so it was you like didn't a, know how long very, ago yeah. either. Yeah, because some he matches were. There. 20 minute match, 30 minute match. This was a you just go until we tell you and then we'll let you know who who's going over. Uh, no pressure <laughs> there, right? Yeah, so but you, you do your best. You can't, you know. Yeah, just but when you're when you're in a match, you want to yeah. keep the momentum going, right? Sure. You you don't want the fans to get bored. You want to keep some heat going. You want, you know, a false finish here and there. You want an exciting match. But how do you do that when you don't know when going you're going to be yeah. done? Because yeah. you know it throws your timing off. So you gotta you gotta do this roller coaster of a match where okay, take a powder, rest. Let's hit it hard again. Oh, not time yet. Okay, let's take a powder. Oh, hit it hard again. Is it time? Nope. He's he hasn't given us the sign. So keep going. So you, and you have to keep coming up two. with false stuff. False finish number three. False right. finish number you're four. You're like okay, I did that already. Now what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. And though Justin, can you imagine they be doing this without fully speaking that language? I mean, that's as real as it gets, right? I mean, you just but that's wrestling. You know, right? we talk about yeah. this all that wrestling does not have language barrier. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm curious yeah. about you know, you were touring all over Japan. I'm wondering in this environment or style that you were you, you were in did this towns dictate or, or or change that momentum you were talking about like uh, is if you were doing a show in tokyo i feel it's going to be a lot different than the parking lot show in you know up at north and somewhere mm -hmm. Hokkaido or something so do you remember any or do you have any like uh impressions from that from uh different towns dictating how you how hard you work or, or what you did? I think, you know, if you're not in a, a big TV match or a, a video match, you don't want to do too much dangerous stuff. Mm. You know, you want to make it mean something. So you will kind of reserve yourself a little bit if you're in a parking lot in a small town, but you still want to put on a good show. In saying that, it depends on who's in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Because... Sometimes the manager would say, hey, you know, somebody important's there. So you you definitely want to put on a good show. So you might do a, you know, a little more than what you would do, you know, in sure. a, you know, not so important match. But, spice. you know, yeah. Or or they say, oh, so and so's here and he wants to see, you know, how this person's coming along. So they're they're out there. They come to this certain town, just kind of checking in to see, okay, who's actually serious and doing a good show in the parking lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you you can't slack. You can't just sure. oh, it's going to be a night off. I'm going to take it easy because no, no, you're no, still you don't you're do still less, proving yourself, right. right? So I think that's that's one of the things where you know in in some of the small towns like here in the states, you got these 
these little companies that kind of go all out a lot just to prove themselves to to build up their their name. Mm-hmm. And when you're when you're with a big company like that, you have a name and you have to represent it. Mm-hmm. So so you have to be careful that you yeah, you put on a good show, you go out there, you give it your all, but don't be stupid. You know, don't take chances on ruining your career or hurting somebody. You know, if if you're going to do something big or you're working on a new move, test it out in the little towns so you can debut it at your TV match in Corrigan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so you use that as your training. You use it to test things out and see how it goes. And then, you know, you're, you're pulling all the stops when you go to the big matches. So it was good to be out in the small towns. It's good to be out night after night after night because then you can you can practice those moves over and over and over again before you have the big show. And you're doing it in front of a crowd. So you've got the adrenaline going and it yeah. It it really made for a unique situation that way. Where I don't think, you know, here if you're not working for a big company and you're only doing maybe a you know, two, three shows a month. Mm-hmm working weekends if that you, you, you don't get the same experience you don't get the same practice and you're not working with the same people hmm. so, so there's a big benefit to working with a company like that and working often right that repetition yeah exactly see mm-hmm. and you pretty soon that all these, these, these 35 40 wrestlers i know what they do you know? yeah. yeah. And when yeah. you're in the ring, you know people's moves and you know how to take their move and you know how to protect them and protect yourself. So it's actually a good benefit to work in that situation. Justin, that was era where from top to bottom, you had Bona Kano, you had Akira Hokuto, you had Manami Toyota, the, the, you know, Suzuka Minami, Minami, the, the, Mita, Shimoda, Kyoko Inoue, the Takako Inoue, you know, all these, you know, Yumiko Hota, the, Toshio Yamada, the, every, every single stars of 90s were there. And uh, yeah, then they, they do a lot of unique stuff and they were equally talented. Mm. And yeah, that was like a very interesting time that uh, yeah. all these rest, I mean, after, after you left, that. Mm-hmm. Every one of those wrestlers got an even bigger star, you know. That when you, it was unfortunate that, that during the tag team match, your tag team partner was Manami Toyota that night when you broke your ankle. No, I was teaming with Hasegawa. It was against, Hasegawa. It was against Toyota and T- Toshio Yamada or Mita. Yes, maybe Yamada. Uh, Yamada. Yamada, yeah. yeah, their regular tag team situation. Yeah. yeah. And it was Channel 8 Fuji Television televised match. You know, the footage exists. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And you've seen it. Was that actually. a semi main or was that main that night? Probably like a semi main event, I but it was a televised semi-main. match, like a, you know, network TV show. So it was really big thing. And yeah. Unfortunate that is, you know, you broke your ankle in two places, like a very complicated, you know, injury, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that's one of the things I don't understand. A lot of wrestlers wrestle in tennis shoes. Uh, or like a wrestling, nowadays, amateur wrestling nowadays in yeah. the States, yeah. you know, people yeah. are wearing tennis shoes or, you With know, sneakers. kick pads and sneakers. Yeah. Uh, that, or the tiger wrestling shoes with kicking pad. Right. Right. Yeah. There is. And, you know, after going through an injury like that, I look at them and I think, you're stupid. Put yeah, on some yeah. wrestling boots. You have so much more s- support. And yeah, I yeah. just, I think it may, be, I don't know if it's a generational thing or, you know, the mom in me, but I'm like, get some boots. I think there's a lot, a lot to do with MMA influence too, you know? But it's also yeah. the look of it because you see a lot of these wrestlers with the look like they want the like you said the MMA look or they're wearing sneakers. But they're doing the if they want to do the high flying stuff, it doesn't really matter what it looks like in terms of like your safety. I mean, wear some. We sound like old fuddy duddies, right? But you know, yeah, wear we something that's you know, support your knees to so support your ankles, especially if you're jumping around. I mean, it, like Deb, when you were working, what you guys were doing was really. 
it was the first of its kind in Japan. You know, even before the guys were doing as much as much lucha style, high flying style, all Japan women were doing a lot of that stuff. Really, really right. high octane stuff. And now, I mean, geez, it's like that's all there every is. Every match from the beginning to the end. It's it's not even that's a, you know that's a different discussion, but it's like it's gotten away from wrestling and it's more the acrobatic. It's sure, show, yeah. a well, lot more. There's yeah, a, high flying. So much pressure on you know having that moment that you can share on social media it's not as much about like a television match or even li- like live shows we were, th- we were just talking about the live shows right to go off a little bit but a live show today 2024 you could live stream it from your phone and the whole world can see it so i mm-hmm. feel like they are kind of lucky to have that that special like you're in front of a crowd but it's not completely exposed yet so you could still work it and and work your craft and improve but not under this new kind of pressure right that I, i'm right. sure like you, it's just nowadays you now. have you've got one take everybody's gonna see it and you can't repeat it the next show we're yeah. back you oh, know, when I was and in also Japan, you could, cons- yeah you consume so much that it'll go away real uh, just as quick too right you know? everything's a yeah. highlight reel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, and, and in Japanese wrestling, you know, women's wrestling was, not, you know, ha- had its own unique evolution. Like I said, the women's wrestling in Japan was never part of men's wrestling group. Mm. Always had the women only wrestling. You know what I'm saying? They then had a Mexican, you know, Mildred Bart came in, had American influence. Fabulous Muda had American influence, then Lucha influence, and the brothers, you know, Matsunaga brothers, they all had boxing and judo background, you know what I'm saying? So it became, women, women, all Japan women's dressing had its own unique style, like original style, and mm. not mingling with men's style. If you remember working right hand, right side and left side, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Very That's original. Awesome. Flavor. It really did. It took you a little while, right? Because yeah, you know, it took took a while because oh, I'm using the other arm. Yeah, I'm I'm arm dragging on this side, not that side. Yeah, and then yeah. when you come back to the states, you're like, oh, I messed that up because I'm on the other side again. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but Japanese do have left left hand side moves too. You know, it's kind of yeah. mixed. Yeah, so you just have to know what you're doing and who your opponent is. You know what they do. Yeah. Right, and it, as you are moving up to the, the, the top cluster, that's when this that the inter promotion thing started happening. All Japan Women, JWP, LLPW, and FMW Women's Division, and your you your tag team with Saki Hasegawa was sent to FMW women's division you know right. that was interesting time because you're working against women that you didn't know you know that way well, right you know right and also they had this mission of proving themselves you know these girls you know are from all japan women's you know like almost elite and they they had this you know only you know atsushi onita taught them very original independent mind you know and it's your chance to prove something to the world. Right. Everybody will talk about it tomorrow. And he was the hardcore wrestler. Yeah, death the match Bob kind of. Wire, death match. <laughs> so I think he trained his wrestlers different as well. Yeah. So yeah. even the women were learning the the hardcore style and not yeah. so much. And, oh, the, and also all Japan women had you know large, you know, big enough roster that if you remember, some some of the old all Japan women's wrestler worked against JWP group, you know, mm-hmm. and like Aja went up, went up against Diamond, you know, Dynamite Kanzai, the, the right. Hokuto and Mita Shimoda were working against LLPW in Kandori and them, and you right. were sent to FMW Women's Division, and they were like, w- w- like the first few times, weren't communicating well, I don't think. No, it, there mm-hmm. wasn't, I think there was a boundary there where 
you know, it's like they got to prove themselves instead of us working together. It was, I can prove that I'm just as good. And the, for me, not knowing the language that well, the communication with someone I didn't know was probably not as good as, you know, the communication with the girls I worked with all the time. So it was, it was a tough couple matches because we had two separate matches with those guys and it wasn't as smooth as right. what we'd hope for. Yeah. yeah but Tsuchi, Tsuchi and Maedo Mari, if you yes. remember. Yeah. 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 So, Shark Tsuchi one... and, and uh, Shark, Shark, Shark Tsuchi and the Crusher Maedo Mari. Yeah. If you yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. The green costume girls. Yeah. yeah. And one of them had a, had a bad shoulder. So, that gave me something to work on. So, instantly, I'm a heel. In their buildings, yeah. Yeah, in their building. Yeah. Big heel, yeah. <laughs> that was Which interesting. Is, that's all right. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if you didn't, you know, you know, didn't get injured, that you would, you know, stay longer and experience all the, uh, the, the inter-promotion big shows all the way to Tokyo Dome, you know? Yeah, and I yeah. missed the Tokyo Dome. Yeah. Oh, Tsuchiya and Maidomari. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a big, big house. Hey, oh, Debbie, and yeah, <laughs> it's yeah that's my Mari. We're and, gonna talk yeah. about this, yeah. Oh, wow, and I remember this costume real well. <laughs> yeah, and then what's that like, uh, going like a Steiner? You still have it at home, that's I do, good. yes. Can you still wear it? That's good. Well, let's not talk about that. Things <laughs> shrink over the years, clothesline right away, yeah. Is that you on the commentary? Well, I did so much, I don't remember. I think that's you, know? you. Oh, God. Well, if I wasn't commentating, I some sometimes I sat right in front the, up by the desk because I wanted to watch it so close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Can't believe it was like a... Is it like a 92? Uh, I believe it's 92, right? That 90, November 26, so. 1992. 92. Oh, my God. Yep. That's like 32 years ago. Oh, God. <laughs> there she is. Stop there doing she the goes. Math, Fumi. <laughs> All There's right. the arm. <laughs> there it is. All the right. Fujiwara what you got, The Fujiwara Amba. All right. <laughs> Bring it up. Oh, boo. Fuduro. And actually, Debbie was one of the few girls who were wearing black wrestling boots. Everybody's white, right? You know, the wrestling right. boots. Yeah. At that time, yeah. Yeah, the black wrestling boots and st looking good is that was a good thing. There's the wrestling well, boots, black wrestling boots, young lion, Antonio Inoki, all these things. You know right. what I'm saying? Stick, sticking with the uh, the gimmick or the style, yeah. the millennial yeah. aesthetic. Yeah, but it's a right. Soranaka's boots mm -hmm. and this is, you know, Jody Malenko, Dean Malenko all wore that, you know, like exactly. plain black wrestling boots. Actually, the boots I'm wearing in there, we went to the same person that made Dean's boots and said, I want them like Kondo Dean's. shoes. Kondo, Kondo yeah. shoes. Kondo shoes. Oh, yep. yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, so careful. Right hand headlock. Put it in the corner and then get kicked in the gut. I had abs then. I don't have those anymore. <laughs> abs? Okay. Oh, yeah. let's see how you get out of this. Boston Crab is a big thing in Japan. Oh, hurts. Yeah, you look so young there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Deb, in 1992, Japan was also very different from how it is now. This is probably big, big primetime bubble period era. You got to experience a special time in Japan. Could you feel it when yeah, you're at these shows? Yeah. Well, what do you mean actually, by like a bubble economy. Uh, they, they, I was there, but I didn't feel it. It, well, you were there. It, I was told, yeah, but the, we were told that was a bubble economy and the economy was so good after he was gone. And I didn't think it was all that special, you know? Well, yeah. at, oh, I first went about 20 years ago and it was still, it wasn't the bubble period, but it was still, you know, the yen was, geez, it was like it was a dollar 10 for uh, right, yen for or dollar. something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Deb, you're Which taking heat. Not that it's not that good now, is it? We're, yeah. Well, because the U.S. dollar is so strong now. Yeah. yeah. Taking heat. Oh, you're in pain. Shark was mean. Yeah, shark was mean. Well, she has that one good arm, so. To the rope, to the rope, yeah. To the ropes. 
All right. Uh, exciting. Yeah. Trying to get that uh, Fujiwara. Yeah. Yeah. On the mat. On the mat. Yeah. We'll come Stay back to that. Stay on her. Yeah. You got to exploit the weakness. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go back and watch that. You know, yeah. all, all those women's, you know, all Japan women's tapes are all in VHS tapes mm -hmm. for me, you know. And uh, yeah, uh, somebody's gonna digitize it, you know. And uh, I mean, you know, it's it's you know official or not. Stop, put that in, put them on YouTube, you know. Well, people need to share it, you know. Well, well the company went out of business. Yeah, but the company went out of business, and uh, that the rights for these footage went all kinds of different directions, you know. Yeah, for the for the. For the money the Matsunaga brothers own too, you know, mm -hmm. so th those video rights went to all different directions. Nobody so wants it. One, one no, no, no. Because no. right. if they did, they could totally. You can do the library. whole series. Oh God, right. yeah. It's the same with so, like UWF or UWFI. There's so many different different directions. Yeah, yes, this the, person owns the, this section of the library, and then this person owns or the ear so and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year yes. was owned by somebody and or well, somebody's basement? Everybody in somebody's basement is all the entire series in. on <laughs> Yeah, I bet, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably in yours, right, <laughs> Fumi? No, 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 no. <laughs> but I do have pretty much all the old Japan women's v VHS from nineties. But it's in VHS. Like you, you can't watch it. <laughs> you oh, know? you, you got to get the uh, you got to rent the old. VCR or beta VCR, man. yeah, yeah. But they stopped manufacturing it. You know, there's you, you the don't one have they, one back there on the shelf uh, with all those books somewhere. Oh uh, no, no, no VHR, <laughs> no, no VCR. I have VH tapes though, but I, I'm gonna go buy secondhand V, you know, VCR soon. You know, because you gotta be able to watch it or at least digitize it on your computer. You know. Anyhow, so so it's like so much to talk about that. The, uh, now that I I just watched your you know your match from thirty two years ago, God, I know it makes it, me it, want it, to jump back in the ring. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. it was a good time, <laughs> wasn't it? Days. Yeah. So it was that you know not too many people did that, and then you actually came all the way from Tampa, Florida, you know, <clears throat> flew into Japan. And spend in, in two and a half years there, and actually you you had toured to Mexico, and you didn't even go back to states, and came right back from Mexico to Japan. Right, right. Remember Hasegawa that? and I went there. Yeah. 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 You almost there. Fun. You didn't even go back. Go home. They yeah. sent you back to Japan from from Mexico. Yeah. That was, it was okay. I was what nineteen, twenty years old. Yeah, send, yeah, send me yeah. to another country. That's fine. Let's go. Let's go see the world. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, I didn't realize how this is, this is like such an adventure thing. When, while you were doing it, now you, you know think back. It's like what an experience! What an adventure you had! Yeah, so, yeah. It's something I'm glad I did it because had I not, yeah, you know, it's when you're given that choice of hey. <laughs> You want to go to a different country and not speak the language and, you know, don't know anybody? Oh, yeah, sure. Sign me up. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, you know, very mom, adventurous. Now, looking back at it, if one of my kids got that opportunity, I'd probably be like, oh, OK, hold on. Wait a minute. Right? But <laughs> then, then again, you don't want to pass up on opportunities like that because it can be a great thing. And it was. You know, I made a lot of good friends, have a lot of good memories. You know, it's it was definitely worth doing. Yeah, so you got to take good. a chance sometimes and just go out yeah. and, yeah. Yeah. Deb, do you think yeah. the training like, back then... You're you one think, of the few people who've done that, so... Deb, do you think the training back then it was is, is too hard for today? Do you think, like, a training program like you girls went through back then would be too too intense? for today's today's wrestling or, or it, would it uh, how would it be different or i don't, I don't know are, are there things that you learned that you think would apply to today's wrestling that would be beneficial you know i don't know how they train nowadays i i haven't been to any of the other schools to be able to say they do things different sure. or what they do and what they don't do you know, sticking with fundamentals, 
you know, arm bars, headlocks, and just chaining, what they call chain wrestling. Mm -hmm. If you can get that down to where you can get in with anybody and just be able to do that smoothly, I think is a great place to start and should always be something that you're fluent in. It's like the basics. Everything else, it's like adding your own spice to a meal. You know, whether you do flips or moonsaults or things like that, you got to get the basics down. So I think that's that's the biggest thing. And conditioning is huge. You know, if you if you can't breathe, you can't wrestle. So if you got to be in good shape, plus it looks better if you're in shape. You're an athlete and you're in a sport. Yeah, you know, so you, you got to represent, you know, and look the part. So I think conditioning and training and fundamentals are the biggest part of anything that you do. Hmm. So yeah, I think but that the there again, WWE I don't performance know. center does it real serious now. You know, I've seen uh, well, in the video so, you know, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, their practice up there. Their, their, yeah. their practice Norman is Smiley, like very, sure. very serious. Yeah. yeah. Conditioning I, and wrestling performance. Yeah. I've course. never been there. They've mm. <laughs> yeah. not worked for, for them. Yeah. So I don't know. But, you know, you can see them on TV. They're all in good shape, you know. Yeah. And yeah. So I'm I'm assuming they're doing all the right things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the one thing I wish I would have learned earlier was ring presence. Like I couldn't do an interview to save my life. Didn't know how how to represent my yeah. character. The my... Part, you can't teach them. <laughs> no. But you what know? they do, you know, they actually, you know, some of the people that are having seminars now, they're they're teaching you how to how to do all of that, like the marketing part of it. That's what I didn't know when I started. So I knew the fundamentals, I knew the sport, I knew the wrestling. I took it serious as a sport and not as a you know, uh, not only performance. Yeah, not performance. Type. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't good on the showmanship. And that developed when I was in Japan because the girls kind of helped me with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember a bull going, you got to be loud, you know. Mm -hmm. ah. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and she's <laughs> like, no. You know, she's like, they were trying to help me be louder and more serious and put those moves on. So that helped a lot. But that's that's not something I learned before I went. So and probably had I spent more time, I could have learned it. But I just went soon. I went early. As soon as somebody offered me, hey, you want to go? I'm like, yes, please send me now. Oh, wait, what am I doing? You know, <laughs> so that was, I probably oh, yeah. I could have been more prepared, but I I did learn a lot while I was there. And it was mm -hmm. great. Very good. So, and Fumi helped me a lot too, because he helped me. He's like, hey, "Hey, you should wear a singlet." I'm okay. I'm like, "Okay, I'll wear a singlet." He's like, "The Steiners are a good look." Okay, let's yeah, do that. Yeah. You know, stick with the Malenko boots. Okay, let's do that. So, yeah. I I took anything and everything as far as you know, help with the character, help with the wrestling, help with the image. I just took it and ran with it. So, thank you, Fumi, for that. Because I didn't know what I was doing. No, 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 you had it. You I just jumped it. on the plane with a suitcase. That's all I did. Oh, Ended up God, being a sick. perfect fit. It really did because of everything that was going on. That you talked about it earlier for me. The the list of so many stars. They were all very different. Everyone had their own style and flavor. And Deb, when you came in there, it grounded everybody, literally and figuratively. It, there there was a, a need for somebody that didn't have giant spiky green hair and makeup and you know what i mean there was a lot of yeah, wild but that was so cool it was cool <laughs> but you know there's got to be balance right well, cool. hey there's always time right you can always make a, right. a comeback with the uh, you know mask just like green hair like he green hair or who knows <laughs> i'm sure your kids would love that oh they yeah. would they would die yeah <laughs> yeah and you are mother of three and it's just yeah. like how do they understand it's like you know this, you know the, their mom used to you know live in Japan and did wrestling and uh, you know just uh, had another I mean different life <laughs> you know and uh, they, they're not necessarily I, wrestling fans so so they're they're not huge wrestling fans like we'll watch it now yeah. and the the kids will ask me questions or be like do you know them or you know. <laughs> I'll name drop every once in a while, but not often. But you know, my 
my uh, youngest son and I, like, he'll come out to the kitchen. And he's like, hey, mom, come here. Let me try this hold. And he'll, you know, <laughs> grab me in the head. Mom. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just something that. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, like a big in Japan rock and roll song. You know, the song called Big in Japan. Just you know the song, right? Big in Japan. Uh, I know like, there are a lot of bands that are big in Japan. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because well, there's the a song big called Big in Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, being big in Japan is is it's a special thing because there are only a few like bands and wrestlers and artists and musicians or whatever that yeah some very reason, selected very talented person like 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 Cheap Trick in Japan they're really really big. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Big or some Mr. Big, of course. I mean, they're big <laughs> everywhere, but they're in Japan. There's sometimes foreign acts connect in a really deep way in Japan that they just, they don't connect in the same way other places. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of a strange phenomenon, isn't it? That yeah. you take something foreign to Japan and it gets big, and other countries are like, "Who is that?" Yeah, yeah. but the Japanese fans don't forget. You know, no. when I speak with say wrestling fan at, at, at the wrestling arena you know and you mention name debbie malenko they they come up with what, what they remember and and they already still have all the pictures you know and yeah yeah and then in social media well young people don't use facebook but the facebook for older people right that's fine but the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Instagram and other things, but the Facebook sure. you find wrestling fans that keep everything, you know, and they still have all. The, I, sometimes I see, I send you like uh, old photos of yours that right? you, you don't even remember that existed, yeah. and I still get it. You know, like when I say David Malenko, like, actually I have a lot of photos of David Malenko. It's like the picture they took in front of the All Japan, you know, company building. Yeah, or, or that isn't road. there anymore. No, that's not there anymore. It's a big parking oh. lot. Yeah. Yeah. The parking lot we talked about. And also the picture you're holding somebody's dog, you know, <laughs> or the picture you're in the motorcycle. You never had a motorcycle. And no. It's like, what was that? But you know, you know whose motorcycle that was? Was it Daichi's? Yeah. Okay. The referee. And he's, still, he's still refereeing, isn't he? Referees, for, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That was his yeah. bike. I that's his it. bike. Yeah. He okay. he actually he took me for a ride on his bike once and we got pulled over by the cops. Yeah. And it was just down the street from the dojo. And he's like, Debbie, you go back. You go. So I had to get okay, off and get run in trouble. back to the dojo. You get into trouble? Yeah. <laughs> the deportation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Wild. Yeah, well, a lot of the people who used to work all Japan women, you know, some some of them are not with us anymore, but some of them retired. But a lot of these, you know, people like Punch, they are mm -hmm. still in wrestling business today. My. To this, yeah, yeah. Well, it gets in your blood. I mean, what else are you gonna do, right? It's you know, it becomes part well, of you. I mean, and when well, you think like you when know, we so went on the road, about. he was refereeing at night, driving the bus during the day. Yeah, you know you're. He drives us to the next town, gets out, sets up the ring, drives us to the hotel, you know, yeah. after the match. And some he nights he's a sound time. guy, too, you yeah. know, to get the music up. Yeah. Right. Oh, so it, nobody had one job. Right. <laughs> right. That, that, that was old Japan one, man. Yeah. Oh, it's very interesting, you know, that uh, it's uh, like some people call it like a circus, but it was like a very just tight unit, you know, like a, this you know, cohesive unit of people. Right. Well, it's like a, a carny act, a circus. Of you course, know, you, of you go to the next town, you set it up, you do your show, you break it down, you go to the next town. Another thing. Yeah. 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 They don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's different. That was good. Yeah. yeah. But the wrestling used to be, you know, in the States too, you know, it was, it was like that. But that yeah. was like I've been saying over and over, decades before cell phone let alone internet or the moving image or streaming service you know right and all that. so and social media of course <laughs> but now that we're sitting here having this conversation and this is thanks to technology and uh, yeah yeah and i want people to share this you know that the story you are telling us tonight today tonight <laughs> you know that <laughs> i hope today's wrestling fan would enjoy it yeah. 
And learn and from we got to get of some of those videos and, you know, the, the all Japan yeah. shirts from back then. If they could see what wrestling was like, then I think people would really enjoy it because it, it is completely different than anything that you'll find that's out there now. You know, as good as WWE and AEW and all these shows are, there was just something unique about all well, Japan. Ra Rossi's, Rossi's new company would be good. It will be good. But it yeah. won't be quite the same. Yeah. You know, I I went over for Arceon. I went over yeah, for right, right, when he right. had that company and then Stardom. And they're good. His shows are wonderful. But it's not quite the same as it was in the All Japan era. It was no, this, just something this special back then. Mary Marigold, Rossi is trying to bring back the old-fashioned wrestling. He said that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. It would be very interesting. It's going to start soon. Yeah. So if March. you talk to him, let him know that I I yeah, would not yeah, mind yeah. being a part of that. I'll, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, then, I'll uh, clean up after the shows, put the ring together, commentate. <laughs> I just okay. think the world of him, and I just know he's going to put out some good shows. So being a part of it is never a bad thing. Right, right. Very there are a lot of new wrestlers that could teach, too. A lot of very new, very young the actress, girl roster that they just picked up and ever it's yeah. it's but like you were saying that the, like i know what you mean the pace the rhythm almost is different the all japan 90s style that you were doing i mean maybe people would say it's a little dangerous now but at the time i mean it it, it didn't feel like men's wrestling it felt like the, it was like there's it, men's wrestling and there's women's wrestling and they're both going at 100 miles per hour but you know th as a woman there's a different way you can move your body than a man you, like like shoulder spine neck it. movement yeah 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 or, uh, seeing moves that you would constantly see like the you know hair throw uh -huh. that you would always see in japanese women's wrestling that you can't really it's not a thing that you would see in men's wrestling they're the little <laughs> the little idiosyncrasies that were made it so like it had its own flavor. Yeah. It had its women own. are different. We're made different. Yeah. And it's going to look different. It's going to feel different. And it should. It's its own unique. In the best ways. Experience. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. And men's wrestling is great, too. There's things they do that we women just aren't built to do. And that's great, too. The, let the guys have the guys stuff. We like our stuff. And, yeah, yeah well, but... Well, you know, women, you can appreciate women's both. German suplex mm. and, and male German suplex. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Same German suplex, yeah. but the arch is different. You know what I mean? I think yeah. Yeah. women also have a better ability to, to like more suppleness to bend with a, something like a, a, a back suplex where some girls, they're just flexible, but it looks like they mm -hmm. murdered. But it, <laughs> it's because yeah. that yeah. beautiful body, Northern Light suplex. Sure. Yeah. And because of yeah. how, how they can um, apply their body to it and, and make it look a certain way that guys can't because of the, the how heavy certain bones and muscles are. It just looks different. The pure you know, muscle mass. Yeah, and, the, yeah. the arm is too big or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think yeah. there are advantages going both ways. You could just, and like you said, that like if you have the fundamentals, then after that, you could do whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you well, let, have a starting let's plan point. on you know having you back in Japan before too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd fun. love to go. Yeah. Come back as a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Come back a legend, as a spectator but... and just enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> uh, she can still go. She can okay, still have some role. Right. Yeah, I want to see a lay some legend, legend, smack legend in these new mission uh, doing running or something. <laughs> no, you gotta right, show. Well, him. Make make some phone calls for me and let me know. <laughs> show them the yeah. old style. Show them the '90s style. Show them how hard it was. Show Julia. Maybe I just need to Tommy come in like up. a like a monster monster ripper and just come in <laughs> for a couple tours and just lay waste to the company and then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just also you know that, uh, like I said, Japanese fans don't forget. You know, always remember. So that's a good thing. It is. Right, Justin? Absolutely. All right. So, uh, okay. Very good. 
Deb, if we wanted to search for you on the internet, on social media, yes, yes, where can we find you? Just Google Debbie Malenko. <laughs> okay, I guess. Google Debbie Malenko. <laughs> you can find me. I'm on. Okay. I'm, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. For booking, it's a book Debbie Malenko. I know, right? Right. I've got an email. Yeah, so you can find me. I'm out there. Okay, we'll spread the word. How about Fumi? Where can we find you? <laughs> uh, Twitter X at Fumihiko Dayo, F U M I H I K O D A Y O, Fumihiko Dayo on X Twitter, or just Fumi Saito on Facebook. Fumi Saito, no space 2001 on Instagram. Woo! There he more is. More and more. Yeah. <laughs> on X, I'm at Justin M Nipper, K N I P P E R. All right. Take it away, Fumi. Until next So long from Tokyo. It was a great time. Thank you, Debbie. Thank Thanks. you, guys. I had a lot of fun. We'll talk soon. Yeah.